Episode 136 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is the first of a three-part series on play. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness? The 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Are you ready to step it up? I'm taking on new clients at Forever Fitness Personal Training. Get me, get the community, support, and accountability. Go to forever.fitness. There's still time to get in on the 10% discount, but you need to jump on this now. I wanted to start this episode with a quote that I, I've heard many, many times. I really don't remember who to attribute it to, but it basically goes like this. We don't stop playing because we got old. We got old because we stopped playing. I think most of you would agree that we don't live and act the same way we did when we were kids and teens. I mean, you think about it when you're an older teen, and a, you know, younger teen even, and how we used to spend our summers, and I just remember getting on a bicycle, you know, from morning till dusk, and we could be out running, playing, and just just go, go, go. And it would be football and basketball and baseball and tetherball. We'd ride our bikes off of ramps. We'd play tennis. We'd do skateboards. What did you do for play? I mean, all I know is that I just was constantly active all day long, all summer long. And it was really, really a pain when you got back into school and they expected you to you know, sit down in that desk for hours at a time. So what would, we, what would we do as soon as they let us out for recess? We're out there running around with the balls again. You know, we're out there just playing all the time. And so why do we not do that anymore? Well, I think a lot of people would say, well, I, I really don't have the time. You know, I've got these obligations like work and family and chores. But is that really the reason you don't play? Is it really you don't go out and play baseball or you don't go out and play tennis or you don't go out and do a sport because you don't have time? I mean, really? You don't have time? Now, I know a lot of people have obligations. And I I know that it's, it's very easy to say, I have to do this and I have to do that. But, you know, part of getting fit, part of doing this means making a commitment to yourself. And that's very, very hard for some people to do, you know, because what I'm asking you to do is, is I'm asking you to be a little selfish. At least a lot of people hear it that way. They hear, oh, he wants me to take time away from my family or take time off of work to go do these things. And the reality is most of the time you don't have to, because guess what? Every other adult out there is working pretty much the same hours you might be working. So joining a league, be it tennis, be it golf, be it softball, whatever it is, even pickleball for that matter, there's sports out there that you can go out and join a league and play. It's just a function of mindset. Now, why do I think it's so important for you to play? I mean, because, you know, aren't you already, can't you just already go into the gym? Can't you already just do your little home workout and you'd be fine? And, and the short answer is yes. But the long game is, are you going to stick with it? And what I mean by the long game on this and the sticking with it is a lot of people will get engaged in a workout. They'll get engaged to lose weight or do whatever they want to do from a fitness and health perspective. And they may or may not meet that goal, but the people who meet the goal oftentimes, or get very, very close, and this is it typically, very, very close, you know, like that last five pounds, and I know you've heard this, that last five pounds is really hard to come off, and a lot of people just keep doing the grind of what they're doing, the workout, the workout, and they're not enjoying themselves, and as the function of not enjoying themselves, they now consider it a punishment, and so it's a punishment for not getting that last five pounds off, and the funny thing is, I was reading an article today, and it was, a, it was a discussion about ketosis. And if you've been following me for a little while, you know that I'm working on ketosis. And this was an article saying that ketosis has been shown to reverse type 2 diabetes. Hey, that's important, right? It's a very hard regimen to stick to. And so a lot of people really struggle with it. And I have too. But I have a goal, and I'm going to meet that goal. That goal includes me being able to play sand volleyball. Okay, now... You see the magic there. This is not just about me being vain. Now, 
There's nothing wrong with vanity. I love looking good. I, I do. I really want to look good. I like when I'm down in those lower body fat percentages and my body just looks sculpt. I really enjoy that. But I'm not doing this to look a certain way. I'm doing this to be capable of doing something that I enjoy. So, you know, what it does is it kind of gives me a purpose. It, it says, okay, I can't move a body that's this heavy for some amount of time without burning a lot of energy. And so I will only be able to play for a certain amount of time before I will have to take a break. So I could spend all of my time working on endurance or I can work on endurance and I can also then work on losing some body fat. So I need less energy to move my body around. Therefore, that endurance gives me that much more opportunity to play. So the next time I find myself with an opportunity to play beach volleyball, I'm ready. And so there's a purpose to that. And you can see why I have a very distinct purpose for the types of training, the things that I'm going to be doing over the course of the next several months. The other thing is about connection. And what I mean by that is very few sports are played alone. You're either playing with someone or you're playing against someone or a series of both. So I get to connect with people when we play these games. I have a teammate. We have to communicate. We get to have fun together. It's camaraderie. Everybody's enjoying themselves. And win, lose, or draw, we're all there having fun. We're adults. You know, we're not, we're not making any or losing any money playing this. I don't know. Some people play golf and lose a little bit of money from time to time. But that's their thing. I'm not the golfer. And I'm not betting any money on myself for volleyball. I'm just going out there to have fun. And I know everyone else there is doing the same thing. And it's a great opportunity to connect with people. And, and make new friends. And those friends that you're making are also sports-minded. They want to be better at their sport as well. And, you know, Jim Rome is famous for saying, you are the, the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're getting out and playing a sport with other sports-minded, other fitness-minded, other health-minded people, now you have this magic of connection that's making you better at this just from the fact that you've surrounded yourself with people that really care about this. And then again, as I kind of mentioned in purpose, but it kind of gives you some direction. So if let's say I decided I wanted to be a little stronger, I might want to try to find a sport that I would enjoy that would allow me to utilize that strength. Now, I don't see myself competing in weightlifting events, but I do know when I went to CrossFit, I really liked the fact that I could deadlift as much, if not more, than most of the people there. Now, I'm a little bit more competitive than you might be, but I did want to go into CrossFit. I did want to get strong. And so when I was strong and I was in that group with people, it kind of gave me that direction to keep focused on those things. So in the end, I never really thought of what I was doing as a workout. I always thought of what I was doing, and I still do now, think of what I'm doing as training, as training to be better at the sports that I would enjoy. And so some things that I'm looking to do, I'm looking to play some volleyball, I'm looking to play some tennis. Those might not be sports that you would enjoy, but there's sports like pickleball, which are kind of toned as toned down version of tennis. I've never actually seen anybody play it. I've just, I've read about it. And then just something like bowling. You know, it's not a hard sport, but I would say with bowling, stay away from the beer and nachos. But it is an opportunity for you to kind of step out there and do something with focus. Do something. And then what you do then is back up and say, okay, now when I go into the gym and I start doing something, I want to do it with the mindfulness of what value I'm going to get out of being better at that sport. So like I said, with the volleyball example, I would need endurance. And I would want to lose some body fat to weigh less. Now, if I want to play tennis, I might want to add a component of strength in there because I want to be able to hit the ball a little bit harder. So I might work on some upper body and lower body strength and maybe some strength on a rotational perspective. So I'm just a little stronger when I hit that tennis ball. And so playing against someone kind of my size or my age, I might have a competitive advantage if I can build that strength to be able to put a little bit more velocity on that tennis ball. So again, look for a sport that you would enjoy. It may have been a sport that you played in the past, or it may be just a sport that you want to try. Get out and play the sport. See if you enjoy it. And if you do, then build your fitness program to fit that sport. 
And what you'll find is you, the fitness levels and the things that you're getting out of your workouts are going to make you feel so much better about what you've accomplished. So you're not stuck on that, I have five more pounds to lose, but you're stuck on that, okay, I want to be able to move a little bit faster next time I play that game. And so I'm going to work on speed and agility as a function of my training. Or my balance is off and I need to improve my balance so I can play that game better. So all the different fitness modalities that we've talked about, you have an opportunity to make them matter in a way that's really important to you and then becomes kind of a passion of yours. So you don't have to think of it as workout. It's now training for what you want to do. Taking on a sport you enjoy can really ramp up your fitness level and keep you motivated. This episode's open question, what sport do you enjoy? Go to older.fitness forward slash group and join the conversation. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we continue our conversation about play. Have a happy and healthy day. Mm -hmm.